What happens next after this horrible shipwreck? That's what we're going to find out today in Acts 28. Well, here we are at the end of Acts. Wasn't that good? We learned a lot in Acts. We got through the four Gospels, and now we're in the Acts of the Apostles. Oh, it's been amazing stuff. Next, we're going to go to Romans. So we're making progress in our great quest to read the Bible. It says that Paul was on Malta, and we know where Malta is, and the native people were very kind. They made a fire, welcomed them, even though it was rain and cold, it was, the weather was terrible, and they gathered six and they put them on the fire. And then it says a viper came out because of the warmth. You know, snakes are cold-blooded, so it will seek anything. And it says it fastened on his hand, so it bit him. And when the people there saw this snake hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this is funny, no doubt this man is a murderer. He escaped from the sea and justice still won't allow him to live. Like he got bit by the snake because fate is condemning him. He survived this boat and now it's the snake that's going to get him. I think that's kind of funny. The people who lived on Malta at that particular time were Phoenician explorers. They understood the sea. I mean, the Phoenicians were fantastic sailors. And the language itself is related to Aramaic. So they would have been able to understand each other mostly. Well, you want to start a fight among historians? Try to debate whether it was Hebrew, Phoenician, or Aramaic that came first. Most scientists will say, well, it's Phoenician's language that was first and was the language that basically taught the entire area to have written language. But you know what? There is older Hebrew language that is that looks like the basis of Phoenician language, not the other way around. Hebrew looks to be older. Anyway, this isn't fun with languages, but you can kind of see. So they were like, oh, you know, this guy clearly bit him. This was some kind of justice happening to their pagan religion. But it says then he shook off the creature and was not harmed. And when they saw that, they all thought he was going to die. He was going to swell up. And when nothing happened to him, they decided he was a god. Because who could survive both the shipwreck and being bitten by a snake? And so it said that the neighborhood um, in the area where they landed, there was a chief called Publius. And they entertained him, offered him hospitality. And it happened that his father was sick, had fever and dysentery. And so Paul went and visited him, prayed with his fathers, put his hands on him, and healed him. And when this took place, the rest of the people in the island, who also had the same disease, came. And they were also cured. So this made sure that they were all, the people who were shipwrecked, were honored greatly. And when it was ready to sail again, they were put on board a new ship. That was good fortune. And again, another group of people got to hear the message of Jesus through Paul. So it says that three months after they set sail originally, they finally came. They were there for three months. They went out and got on a ship that had wintered on an island. And the ship was originally from Alexandria, Egypt, right? So it had been also coming around the coast with the twin gods as a figurehead. Those twin gods are going to be Castor and Pollux when we see Gemini in the, the sky. That's the twins. So it had an image of this Gemini. Boats had patron deities. And so in this case, it happened to be these two. The historian Pliny said that the sailing season usually started around February 7th again. So now we had a boat, and so we were going to go ahead and take them. They went to Syracuse, stayed there for three days. They kept going. Winds kept springing up. Obviously, springtime is still going to be tumultuous. And so then they found brothers, and and they invited them to stay for seven days. This is going to be in the toe of Italy, Sicily, that kind of area. And so by being brothers, this means they found fellow Christians. You know what's funny? Is we never had a missionary group that we know of here. The word is spreading beyond. I mean, think of it. You have the original apostles and disciples. The word continues to spread. People are going out to various locations and traveling to various places. We had the eunuch who came from Africa. You know, the word is getting out. And this is a group of brothers in a place we've never even heard anyone go to. But the message of God is spreading. And so they were there being able to stay with people who were Christians. 
It must have been encouraging to see Christians that he never met before. So then it says that they came into Rome and Paul was allowed to stay by himself and soldiers guarded him. Most likely they said that at this point when they ended up in this land, they went on something that was called the Appian Way and probably walked into Rome on foot. Paul had never been here before. I think a lot of the areas that he got to see in Turkey, he grew up in Turkey. He was born there. So he probably knew at least a little bit about the areas he had been visiting. But this is probably brand new. And so it'd be scary. So I think seeing brothers in faith would have just um, warmed his heart and made him feel better about it. And so even though Paul was a prisoner, he wasn't a dangerous prisoner, right? He was allowed to be under house arrest. So that after three days, the local leaders of the Jews gathered and Paul said to him, I have done nothing against our people, not to our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of these Romans. I don't think the Jews living in Rome would have been any more excited about the Romans than uh, Paul was. But when they examined me, they wished to set me free because there's no reason for my death. But the Jews objected and compelled this appeal to Caesar. So I have no charges you know, that come from my people. There's nothing I did against them. Now, Nero himself was anti-Jewish. He had banished all the Jews from being in Rome around 49 AD. And the edict, it said, was no longer under effect. And a Jewish community was building yet once again. We, we talked about how Priscilla and Aquila and people who were Jewish had moved out of Rome, but that is no longer in effect anymore. And so he was able to meet many Jewish people inside the city of Rome. And in fact, we're going to find this out, but the epistle to the Romans was written three years before he even got there. And so they said, you know, we didn't hear anything about you. We didn't get a letter from Judea. None of the brothers here reported anything bad about you. We just wanted to hear what your views are about all of this. We've heard about this sect. It's being talked about everywhere and spoken against. They came to where he was living, his lodgings, and he told them, he testified about the kingdom of God and tried to talk to them, convince them about Jesus, both being from the law and the prophets. This is the fulfillment of the Jewish faith, not against it. And some people were convinced and others disbelieved and they disagreed by themselves, but they just departed. They just listened to what he had to say and they walked out. He mentioned to them, you know, the Holy Spirit said in Isaiah, go to the people. And the people disagreeing among himself, Paul then quoted Isaiah saying that, indeed, people will hear, but they won't understand. They will see, but never perceive. You know, Jesus spoke a lot like this too. The people's heart has grown dull and their ears can barely hear and their eyes have closed. Coming from Isaiah 6, 9 through 10. Jesus did a lot of this kind of thing too. But he said, you know what? The salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and, and they're going to listen. And it says that he lived there for two years at his own expense and he welcomed anyone who would come visit him. And he proclaimed the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus Christ, with boldness and without hindrance. You know, he was under house arrest. He couldn't I mean he can go, go to the temple. He couldn't walk around where he wanted to. But people could visit him, and so people came all day long, and he spoke the same bold message he spoke all along. And at least at this particular case, we don't see the angry rioting. It sounds like people listened to him, and some believed, and some didn't. I mean, this is the kind of discussion I think you really want to have. What I'm going to meditate on is that fact that at the very end of that passage in Isaiah, it says, and turn, and I would heal them. Turn, turn back, change your mind, change your point of view repent, right? That's the word that Jesus had been saying, John the Baptist had been saying, the apostles have been saying, God wants to heal everybody. And in some cases, sometimes people hear the word and agree with it. And sometimes people hear the word and reject it. But it is God's will that everybody hears and gets that healing that comes from God. Not just the healing, but the life everlasting. What I'm going to pray about is the fact that Despite all the hardships that we had just heard Paul go through, it really was his intention to go to Rome. He intended to go to Rome. And guess what? He got to Rome, not the way he thought about, but the way that God provided for him. So my prayer is that I always remember that when something looks dire, like it's not going to happen, God comes through in really miraculous ways that in Paul's case, 
included arrest, four years in prison and through two governors looking to King Agrippa. And now he is finally in Rome, which is where he wanted to go before anyone. And it was the Romans that helped him make the trip. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And what I'm going to share with others is that God will come through to us and in some cases, take the very people that are imprisoning us, hopefully we're not in prison, but make a trip happen. Sometimes the very thing that you think is preventing you from doing God's work is going to be the very thing that allows you to do God's work. And that is the kind of God we worship. That's the kind of way that God and Jesus wants his message out there and he will come through for his people. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening. We have reached the end of Acts. I appreciate you going through this with me. Hopefully you're reading the Bible along with me, the slow road through the Bible and learning a lot too. You're always welcome to email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I'd love to hear from you and how This is all going. You can always find all of my podcasts on YouTube. If you look for Small Steps with God, you would find all of these podcasts up on YouTube too. I'm still organizing and trying to figure out how to kind of get this in a place where you can always go through this on your own. These podcasts are still here. They're right from the very beginning of the Gospels and the New Testament. So please feel free to listen at any time and let me know what you think about it. Have a wonderful week.